Manila was host to the World Economic Forum in East Asia. Three of the communities from that launched the open collaboration with East Asia New Champions 2014 or Ocean 14 in Cebu last Saturday, ran through the weekend. Uh, Young Global Leaders is a multi-stakeholder of that World Economic Forum community. Winston de Marilia is part of the, is one of the Young Global Leaders. Uh, he joins us now along with Manny Osmeña, who is in Cebu, to talk about the opportunities of collaboration between the government, the private sector, why they pulled this together. They'll talk about innovative businesses, their role in mobilizing disaster response across various sectors, uh, and a lot of other things. Let's talk to them. Good afternoon, Winston. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Maria. How are you? Thanks good, for having good. me here. Thank you. And, and Manny is with us from Cebu. Thanks for joining us, Manny. Hi, Maria. Hi, Winston. Hi, Winston. Thank you. So, Winston, what made you, you and Manny, well, you and Karen originally, Karen Davila, talked about putting oceans together. Well, let's start with the World Economic Forum, I guess. How would you assess how it went last week? What was it like? What did it bring to the Philippines? Well, first of all, we were really excited that the uh, World Economic Forum finally came to the Philippines. It was the first time in 23 years. And in my tenure as a young global leader, I was really hoping that I, I'd get to experience that. And uh, you know the expectations live up to the billing. We were the, the World Economic Forum came here, saw a country that used to be called the sick man of Asia, turning into what they started out to call as the, Asian, the new Asian miracle. Um, there was a lot of optimism in terms of what we have accomplished in our economy. Uh, but the other thing that was really, really interested and fascinating is, is the focus on how the Philippines seems to excel in our social initiatives as well as a community coming together in addressing issues like disaster response. So it's a very good uh, session here in Manila. I think there was a lot of conversation discussion about the sustainability of the Philippines as an economic um, component of the ASEAN region. Yes. Uh, as well as we as a people coming out uh, from uh, a period of time where we're not as proud as Filipinos right. to Filipinos now. Um, bringing a banner and pushing it forward in terms of economic, social good. And, and becoming one of the tigers. And right, becoming one region, of the tigers. Right? So it feels like we're ready to do it. Ah, fingers crossed. Manny, you as a businessman, you know, a, a long-term entrepreneur, you attended the World Economic Forum. What did you take out of it? Actually, uh, the thing that really touched my heart is that not only business was uh, uh, discussed, but every single person that I spoke to had some uh, had that side of the uh, a spirit of social responsibility in their hearts, uh, whether they be seasoned older businessmen or even the young upcoming entrepreneurs. So it's really heartwarming to know that um, the uh, the entire theme of you know uh, being said that inclusive growth is actually not just said but. I can feel uh, the spirit in the air on that area. Fantastic. Um, Winston, you actually are a successful technopreneur. You, you live in two worlds, the United States and the Philippines. Uh, what changes have you seen since you successfully sold your companies? I mean, you've done very well in the Well, in <laughs> thank you, Valley. Maria. Um, changes, I think the changes is people are now daring to dream. I think at one point, last year we talked yes. about Filipinas and we're, what are, what are, uh, what areas we need to work on. Um, it, it has been uh, the mindset of the Filipinos that we do work for other people and other companies. We build products for other uh, companies around the world and we go we're good at it, but we never really had that confidence that we can build our own products and be proud of it. And what I'm seeing now in the last two years is that we're coming out of that shell that we believe we can mm -hmm. right that we can create communities that can reinforce each other's to create great things not yes. just in technology but in other aspects of thing of areas like furniture clothing uh, as well as you know just just general industry and also you know maybe it's driven by all the disasters that we're seeing but I'm seeing a lot of Filipinos with a really good social heart mm -hmm. uh, that's really um, uh, coming together and 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 being proud as Filipinos as we talk about you know what we've accomplished. So you were a driving force in bringing the three communities of the World Economic Forum to Cebu. First of all, what made you decide to do it and then why Cebu? So the, the World Economic Forum is real big on the word inclusive. Yeah. 
And I always wondered uh, how that inclusivity uh, gets expanded when we all we do is meet together in a, in a place like Manila amongst ourselves. Now, what, get, what, ha what happens in these meetings in Manila and in Davos, as an example, is there's an exchange of best practices by the global experts. What we wanted to do with OCEAN is to take that conversation around best practices and bring it directly to our communities. Um, Karen Davila and I really push for doing this in Cebu. We feel like it's the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. and it gives us a really good platform to invite the rest of the leaders uh, in the Philippines as well as in ASEAN region mm -hmm. to extend the conversations and the dialogue in the Manila WEF event and take it down to what we call impact zones, yeah. right? So we had uh, a good cross-section of entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, government officials, uh, as well as just local leaders, right? mingling, combining, talking to the communities of the World Economic Forum. And the other dimension we brought here is that instead of this being a YGL initiative, which what Karen and I started, we really want to bring in the rest of the communities of the World Economic Forum that included the global shapers, mm -hmm. the social entrepreneurs, and our global growth companies, and, and really have that multi-sectoral, uh, multi-age uh, discussions on, on economic development here in the Philippines. You also brought in plus social good. I yes. mean, w as a community, why? Well, it's important for the dialogue to go beyond just the venue of Cebu, yeah. and we wanted to spread the word. Uh, Plus Social Good, uh, the United Nations Foundation, is really good at spreading the word, as well as correlating what we do and what we talk about in, in Cebu I via Ocean with the rest of what's going on in the world. So that sets the bar uh, for all of us and sort of put us uh, in the same baseline as the rest of the world, and, and it's helped quite a bit expanding that conversation beyond the walls of Move and Pick and beyond the, the, the boundaries of, of Mactan Cebu. Well, Manny, you were at one point the third uh, largest exporter out of Cebu and a lot are a lot more now a, a wine connoisseur and the uh, owner of Move and Pick. What made you decide to be involved with the Ocean 14? Actually, um, I was very excited when uh, both Winston and uh, Karen uh, brought up the idea that they're going to bring a uh, uh, post-summit to Cebu. And I said, uh, like what Winston said a while ago, um, the, it, you know, it's good to be bringing it to the, you know, to the communities outside of, of just uh, the metropolis of Manila. And, uh, and I was very much for it. That's why... Um, I, uh, in, in, in my side, we did everything we could to uh, put this together that would be world class on our side as far as the hotel is concerned. Okay. And uh, during the press launch, uh, I was invited to the press launch. And what got me very involved was during the press launch, uh, Eileen Mangubat of uh, uh, the uh, editor of uh, Cebu Daily News uh, brought out a question to the panel uh, about what is there what what could World Economic Forum uh, do in helping disaster preparedness or uh, uh, disaster management and I guess uh, Winston uh, asked me to give my opinion and Right there and there, I just realized that uh, a couple of weeks ago, my second daughter, Megan, uh, as uh, we were discussing about uh, the Money O Group starting a program called Yolanda Rebuild Program, that uh, this year we will, by God's grace, we'll be completing 160 houses for 160 families in four communities where uh, the Yolanda has uh, uh, hit and also the earthquake in Bahol, she said that uh, uh, she, she learned that many uh, victims would have survived if there was enough medical facilities. Uh, there were enough doctors, uh, volunteers, but there was not enough medical facilities. That's why she told me that, uh, how about thinking of a hospital ship? <laughs> and that really, came to my mind and during that forum I mentioned that uh, this would be a very good idea and somehow uh, 
the Lord just impressed in my heart that uh, since you're talking about it now, why don't you uh, uh, start leading this whole campaign? So right there and there, I, uh, the burden in my heart was so strong that I said, yeah, I'm prepared to do something like this. And uh, I'm prepared to put in a seed money of half a million US dollars. And that's how it all started that I became so involved, much more involved with the Ocean 14 in Cebu. Fantastic. Well, we're going to come back to you, Manny, to talk a little bit more about that and where you're taking it. But let's let's go back and find out, you know, so what did you accomplish in this? Was it what you wanted it to be? It was what we thought it was going to be uh, and a little bit more. So uh, at Ocean, uh, the opportunity to bring the experience of Davos and the experience of the World Economic Forum regional events was what we were shooting for. Um, there were a couple of goals that talks about uh, bringing innovation zones to the Philippines. Yep. Uh, there was one other goal of uh, increasing our ability to create an industry around our creative talents and creative economy. But what we ended up uh, getting from this is really a uh, collaboration and networking of the young global leaders, uh, the global shapers, the social entrepreneurs, and the global growth companies with their counterparts in the Philippines. Um, we were able to really stimulate the mindset of Filipinos as we are all thinking now about we're, we're becoming a progressive uh, country and we want to make sure that, that that growth in economics is spread across all right. the Filipinos right. uh, via entrepreneurship. There was a lot of exchange and dialogue between yes. us, the Filipinos, and our guests uh, from the World Economic Forum. And, and those dialogues is now uh, birthing more conversations. So it, it, it had, didn't end on Sunday. It's, it's continuing to, to live forward. Uh, and it's really, you know, there, there's dual pride that you feel yes. that, that we as a member of the community of the World Economic Forum has finally brought, brought our skills and our collective interests to Cebu, but also looking from the other side, uh, my fellow Filipinos, right, mm -hmm. being more confident to talk about this is our time, you know, we're going to build our economy, and as we build our economy, it's going to be with heart in it, mm -hmm. right? social responsibility both to our people and to our, to our um, ecosystem. Well, again, in comparison, the, the mood at uh, in Cebu over the weekend was was different from the mood in Manila. Yeah, it truly was collaborative. So Manila is a lot of brain power. People brought in statistics and data. People brought in a lot of power and policy making and the ability to affect you know laws uh, as well as policies. Yes. I whether it's intra country or inter country, uh, so that was kind of what you get out of a classic WEF. Right. A lot of things get done at that level because of what the WEF can do. Right. What Ocean has done is take that same energy, mm -hmm. right, but then spread it some more to people that really matter, like the real impact Correct. point Correct. Uh, in life. And, and, and when people start to collaborate, when people start to, to combine their resources, you know, things happen. So what we spouse at the WEF as things we should do, mm -hmm. right, we spend a lot more time in Cebu to think about how can we do it. So it was Correct. a good continuation event for that. and. Uh, I was just I was just happy. Everybody was you know had a really good feeling about uh, our ability now to partner with the rest of the world. It seemed at least uh, I I attended that weekend, but it also seemed that there was it, there was a different sense of purpose. And Manny, I'm, I'll go back to you in this. At the one of the keynotes, Manny was one of the keynotes at the in the morning, and that was when he announced this project to actually be able to create vehicles, hospitals, mobile hospitals. Um, after you announced it, what was the reaction? What do you, where is it now and what do you plan to do with it? Yes, in fact, uh, as I said, it started as a hospital ship. Uh, uh, you know, the heart was there, but only to realize after speaking uh, and, you know, getting a lot of wisdom from Pessy Cozon, uh, when I sat down with her and I was talking to her about this, that uh, the faster and, and and more efficient way of doing it is not a ship but a uh, hospital on wheels so basically mobile hospitals so that's why uh, it was uh, during uh, during the ocean 14 when i announced the uh, launch of this uh, program uh, the the uh, i mean it was so well received that Everybody just started walking up to me and uh, and volunteered that they want to help. You know, like uh, the likes of uh, J.K. Uh, Srinivasan, 
uh, the senior fellow of MIT who was there. He walked up to me and said that um, uh, he would like to help. And in fact, he immediately started making contacts with uh, big global companies like Tata, Volvo, and Scania. And uh, other than him, uh, even uh, Mark Lasik uh, of Georgetown University. Also, uh, we had a lot of discussion. He walked up to me and said, "I'd like to let you know. I'd like to see how we could help here." Uh, but going back, when when after that uh, uh, press conference, a uh, couple of weeks before the Ocean 14, I immediately uh, contacted my friends because I realized. Being a man with big dreams, I need big people with big pockets and big hearts to, to support this project. So I con contacted my very close friend, uh, Dr. Lucio Tan, and uh, within a few minutes, he just threw his support behind the whole project. So I was even more confident. I was already confident, but this Ocean 14 brought the confidence higher, and we realized that I realized that this is going to happen very fast. So basically, in my mind, uh, uh, we basically are looking at probably the, the name of this uh, project or this uh, organization to be called Hope Now. And the tagline being, we give hope now. So uh, the idea here is we would like to get this implemented as soon as possible. But with all these people who came forward and said, we're going to help including uh, even before the Ocean 14, I was pitching this to uh, Carl Bautista of, uh, of uh, Credit Suisse. And he even gave me a pointer that, you know, uh, to raise the money to start putting this fleet together, which is we're targeting about 10 million US dollars, to raise a fleet of about uh, uh, between 25 to 30 uh, hospital on wheels. Uh, he said, as soon as it's in operation, it has to become a social enterprise that during good times, uh, it should operate like a hospital to make some uh, money so that that money could be used during bad times, during disaster times to fund operations. And uh, not only the advice, but he's ready to, you know, he has expressed to support this, uh, this, this endeavor. Now, the way it's going to work is we basically estimated that with this fleet, we need about $10 million. Now, some of, the, some of these uh, mobile hospitals will have operating theater. Some of them will have diagnostic laboratory or even x-rays. So some of them will cost more, like the ones with the operating theater, some would, co would cost less. But every three mobile hospitals, you would basically have a complete a hospital except beds so we intend to basically uh, work with other organizations that whenever there's a disaster the three mobile hospitals will basically be in, uh, lined up in one area while this uh, tents would be set up by other organizations that would have beds and how do we deploy them uh, as suggested by Tessie Kozon that we should already uh, have contracts or agreements with LCT operators, you know, uh, uh, owners of barges or roros, that whenever there's a disaster, they're ready to help us deploy, whether they do it uh, uh, pro bono or, you know, uh, we will pay part of the cost. So this is how we envision it to work. And we're praying very hard that uh, as much as there's a lot of uh, uh, it was very well received when I opened this up in Ocean 14 uh, that I'd like to, you know, uh, present this to the global community. Uh, whatever is the burden on their heart, uh, we're, we'll be very thankful if they come in and, and, and be part of this endeavor. So Winston, you are a connector in, in to the grassroots, to the global, from the grassroots to the global community. I mean, what what did you make of, of this, of the entire weekend and the well, efforts? So, you know, what we provided was an ecosystem, a venue, uh, people 
and connection, but I wanted to cover one thing that was really interesting that happens uh, at Ocean, right? It's the life cycle of an idea. Okay. Well, let's just manage as an example. So, um, he, you know, the, this, this concept of first response to disasters yep. was, came about during a press interview talking about Ocean. Right? They quickly moved from a hospital ship to a lander vessel, mm -hmm. and that lander vessel quickly evolved into hospitals on wheels. Uh, when we took this idea to Ocean, and I'm just going to give you an idea what's at Ocean. So we had multiple planaries, we had panels, we had something new called the Maker Lab, mm -hmm. and this was actually a, a hacker space mm -hmm. where we have 3D printers and, and, um, uh, and, and uh, video uh, capture systems. And uh, we actually got the prototype, the idea of Hospitals on Wheels in a 3D printer. So we printed it. Wow. Right, and we took that 3D printer and showed it around um, other uh, stakeholders there. So this is how we come about meeting with JK, who was an MIT professor, who yep. thought that hey, if it's a it's, if it's a vehicle, mm -hmm. then it, then stakeholders like Volvo and Saab would be interested in this. Yep. Then we took that idea around, right, and spread it across the other people there, where uh, Mark Lasek, who's involved in the United Nations Foundation, said hey, we can we can spread the word, mm -hmm. right, and talk more about it. And 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 that simple idea, right, that's fundamental uh, to disaster response basically expanded, expounded, and, and connected to other people. And that's what we're hoping to do with Ocean, right? So we're gonna start with people with ideas and passion mm -hmm. into a conference. We bring in global experts, mm -hmm. right? From MIT, uh, from uh, MasterCard, talk yep. and discuss yep. the power of cashless society. Bring all those experts into one place and bring the guys with heart and idea like Manny, mm -hmm. right? And, and take that idea and, and take it as far as it can possibly be within 48 hours. And a lot of those threads happen at Ocean. And that's what we're hoping to do, right? That's where you get action, right? You start with a thought mm -hmm. and then an engagement and then impact and action. So um, we've got multiple threads of those. I'm really proud about how the week turned out. Yep. Uh, and at the same time, as, uh, since you were there, we all had a great time as well. Everybody enjoyed it. Uh, and now we've got lasting friendships coming out of that as well. Is that the fundamental idea of the World Economic Forum, is to bring decision makers together to actually create other things? The positive end, the negative end is, these are your wealthiest, uh, wealthiest powerful people. What? The best way to look at the World Economic Forum is a platform. It was started out as a platform for dialogue mm -hmm. uh, for powerful people to make decisions, make policy. What's great about what Klaus, our founder, have done at the World Economic Forum is really take it to multiple sectors. Mm -hmm. We've got the young global leaders. These are people that have accomplished enough before the, the age of 40. This is you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is you. <laughs> there's the, the young global shapers, yes. uh, to which in Manila and in, and in Cebu, we're, we're known to have the most activity and the most accomplished hubs around the world. Um, uh, and these are the young ones, 20 yes. to 30. Yes. We have the social entrepreneurs like Senator Bamakino, mm -hmm. right, who's got the sole intention of creating social enterprises, mm -hmm. and the companies that are growing, like Aboitis, right. uh, 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 Global Growth. So bringing this community together gives you a more complete macro perspective of a nation okay. right, or, or a region. And having those best practices you know, come in one place and have the dialogue with the local stakeholders kind of ex expanded that scope of what we can do in these discussions. And Ocean expands it even further. And Ocean takes that just a step further to bring it to the community, uh, bring it to non-members of the WEF, mm -hmm. uh, but leaders of the country and stakeholders of, of our faith, uh, and, and you know have that dialogue and expand, right? So um, we're hoping to do more of it. I think it's, it's, it's one opportunity for us to really accelerate the w how we think about our economic development process. It's interesting what you said, the life cycle of an idea. Um, this Manny's idea was did take everyone's imagination there, right? Mm -hmm. and, and people were talking about it. Uh, what's going to happen now that the weekend is over? Well, Ocean's not over. Okay. Uh, Ocean, uh, we, we looked at Ocean as a kickoff, right? Mm -hmm. It's a place to start. Um, we're going to continue the dialogue uh, at Ocean, uh, first through our website. So it's uh, www.ocean14.asia. Okay. Uh, we're going to post all the plenary session videos at, at Ocean. Uh, we're also going to post pictures of people that have been there, their bios. Um, and then we're going to try to open it up for more interactions, questions, and, and, and updates of what's going on uh, in Ocean. We're hoping that Ocean will uh, uh, propagate a few more things, a few more conversations about the same topic, maybe on a smaller uh, scale in a more frequent basis, on a quarterly basis. and. Uh, we're getting a lot of requests to start thinking about Ocean 15. So 
uh, we're going to start planning uh, for that in July. Uh, for now, we're, we're putting the organizers, giving them a little bit more time to rest and, and reflect. But uh, uh, Ocean seems like it's taken a life of its own at this point. So to normal Filipinos, how would you describe what you expect to ripple up down, to ripple? You know, in, in my profession in software, I was fortunate enough to get involved in open source. Yes. And open source uh, takes your contribution, combines it with the collective contribution to result in something better mm -hmm. than your original thought. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're taking that, that model uh, in Ocean. We wanted to start with a original thought. We want to be vocal and loud about that original thought. We want to invite like-minded people to be in the same place, both physically and virtually. Mm -hmm. And we want to expand on that original thought you know, and then direct it towards something that we care about, that we are passionate about. So Ocean is a venue, mm -hmm. it's a platform, it's a place to be, and what makes Ocean outcomes uh, very exciting are people like Manny, who mm -hmm. put content to it, right? right? To use that platform to help people mm -hmm. uh, get, you know, get response for disaster, uh, to initiate new initiatives like the creative economy industry in yes. the Philippines, and, and make that even bigger mm -hmm. than one, one or two people can, can think about. And so this is what we have had the great privilege of learning as we were being a part of the World Economic Forum and with Ocean we had an opportunity to bring that value down to the Philippines. Fantastic. Manny, your last thoughts when you're taught, um, when we're looking back over the weekend and the project that you've run into, what, how has it impacted you and how are you going to take it forward now? Yeah, I, um, what I've been uh, saying and thinking is that uh, the Ocean 14 is, you know, which, uh, which is a post-event uh, uh, after the World Economic Forum. Gathering, the idea of World Economic Forum gathering all these decision makers and uh, um, uh, industry leaders or even uh, the academy together uh, it's really a very wonderful platform uh, because otherwise let's say I have this idea of my heart wants to do this uh, I can't do it alone and by having that platform uh, I was not really expecting that morning after I announced it that I have five six seven people that came forward and said we're ready to support it. Uh, even if, let's say, I have friends uh, that I would knock at their doors, maybe their minds were not conditioned <laughs> to do anything. But having uh, the, the idea of coming together, everybody goes to that venue uh, uh, ready to do something. So uh, I'm really hoping and praying that uh, this ocean, like Winston said, will continue. Uh, it will be ocean 15, 16, 17, 18, and, you know, uh, for a very long time, uh, I am. Sh I would like to believe that uh, Professor Swab would support this uh, because the outcome is very good, and uh, I could feel that his. Uh, uh, I had a one. You know, we had a private meeting with him together with Dr. Lucio Tan. Uh, I was able to pitch the idea of this uh, hospital on wheels. He immediately reacted that uh, this should be brought to Davos. So uh, uh, I believe that uh, he's, he's very much supportive of all of this. And he has a big heart to uh, really make the world uh, a better place. So we will work very hard. And my prayer is that this will, be, this will happen very quickly. It will be an action immediately. That's why uh, I love the idea that the, the name for this one, the brand for this would be Hope Now. The word okay. now is like, we should do it now. Fantastic. That's great. Thank That's Manny Osmeña speaking to you live from Cebu, Winston. Your last thoughts. Well, it's a great time to be a Filipino. Um, what the WEF has done is, is put a spotlight onto what we've accomplished. Uh, everybody now is optimistic. Uh, I think I want to make sure that uh, as, as we looked at all this optimism, uh, we, we use it as a lever. Uh, for us to, to continue to do good collectively as a community. And I think it's the first time that you can start to believe in a Filipino as a community to accomplish things. And, and that's what we learned from Ocean. You know, you do more when you're a group, mm -hmm. community practice, 
and it feels better when you're working with you with your um, fellow Filipinos to accomplish things so uh, hopefully that that becomes addictive and that you know we'll infect more Filipinos with with that I know I said it's your last but there are two major disruptors that are coming in right in the next year which is the technology that you're that's part of your community plus ASEAN 2015 mm -hmm. uh, what do you see now moving ahead for 2015 well what's exciting and what's also uh, threatening is that in any integration process you will have uh, the opportunity to remove barriers for the best product within a region yeah. where you're creating cooperation. So now it's incumbent upon us to provide the best possible product that we want to put forward in the region. And we have an opportunity here in the Philippines when we compare ourselves to the ASEAN 10. Uh, we have uh, far better capability in human capital to execute on technology. We have you know, uh, more abundance than anybody else in our creative talent. And it's really up to us, right, to put this and, and consolidate this thing together into a solid and strong industry so that we take advantage of, of ASEAN integration. The main thought and the general thought is that we can, yeah. right? And the next step to do is to make sure that we do it together. And, and that's kind of the tenet of OCEAN, and I think that's, that's the kind of energy we want to continue to put forward. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Winston Damarillo and Manny Osmeña about Ocean World Economic Forum, innovative businesses and their role in disaster response. I'm Maria Resta. Thank you for joining us.